Alright guys, so today I'm just going to run you through a few of the upgrades uh, that I've done to my DR. Uh, to start off, we'll start with some of the protection stuff. So I've put uh, these Buster VPSs on. Uh, these have actually been on a couple of my bikes now, so uh, I've seen a little bit of action. Uh, next place, uh, we've got the, uh, the bash plate down underneath. Uh, it's a B&B bash plate. On uh, both sides of the bike, I've got uh, case savers and also um, uh, the case saver here for the chain. I'll show you the other side. So we've got the case saver there as well. Um, we've also got this pretty cool trick from Adventure Bike Australia. Um, it's an oil cool guard that just came in the other day, uh, which uh, I like. I've also put on these frame guards um, again. They're on both sides of the bike. Um, I feel that they give me a little bit more sort of grip onto the, onto the bike when I'm standing up, um, but also to protect uh, the rubbing uh, through the paint. Um, so moving on to the controls, I have put uh, some small uh, bar risers in there. They're mainly uh, converters for the uh, for the handlebars uh, that I put on. Um, then we've got uh, the brake pedal. Because I run a centre stand on this bike, um, with, with the standard uh, brake pedal on it, um, it wouldn't it wouldn't uh, go up high enough. Uh, sorry, low enough. So I used to hit the uh, hit hit the frame of the uh, the centre stand. Um, now with the Warp 9 one, I don't have a problem. Uh, I've also added uh, these foot pegs again from Adventure Bike Australia. You'll hear a lot of uh, me buying from Adventure Bike Australia, they're an awesome company. Um, and uh, we've also had the lower risers, I'm pretty sure they're JNS uh, lower risers. Uh, I do run with the Steg pegs, uh, I've had them on a number of my bikes. No, I'm pretty lazy, so uh, what happens is they, uh, they just sort of connect into the back of the boot and uh, you don't have to hold on to the bars as much. Um, again, it's not a necessity, um, it just more comes from me being uh, lazy and uh, not wanting to uh, grip onto the, uh, to the seat as much. Um, moving on to the lighting, so the front light here. Uh, put a uh, guard over the front light uh, to stop uh, some rocks and, uh, and chips and stuff getting into the actual light there. Um, I do run a Cyclops uh, bulb, which is quite a bit lighter than the standard, and I've got two little spotlights, um, which a mate of mine actually bought for me, um, on either side of there. They're really good. I, I shine them just off to the side. They're not they're not super bright, um, but uh, they're good enough to give me a little bit more peripheral vision. All right, fuel and intake, ex, uh, and exhaust. So we've got the Safari 30 litre tank. Um, it now holds, it's bloated out, it now holds about 35 litres. Um, gets me about 650 kilometres, I suppose, out of a tank. Um, I've recently changed over um, to a TM40 carburetor over the stock. Uh, the reason being was I just couldn't get the stock carburetor right and um, this was just plug and play and it's been beautiful straight from the get go, I haven't had to do anything to it. I have put uh, some extra little filters in on either side um, of the fuel lines there. Um, for the exhaust, I went with, with the uh, FMF, uh, pretty sure it's the Q4. Uh, gives a nice note. It's not uh, overly too uh, too loud, um, but definitely helps uh, to uh, to let it breathe a little bit better. Um, I've also put a couple, sorry, one hole. Uh, so I've got a doorknob um, saw saw jig, and just put one hole in the uh, in the air box, just to open it up as well. Um, and I'm also running the funnel web uh, air filter under there as well. Suspension wise. Uh, we've got FFRC, um, we've got the flex valves in the front here uh, with heavier springs and in the rear they've revalved the rear shock, they've put a, a, a spring right in there uh, for my weight um, and uh, yeah, so the suspension on this bike is, uh, is a lot better than, uh, than what the stock uh, bike came out with. Uh, comfort wise. Uh, went with the seat concepts 
seat. Um, so it's been it's been pretty good. It was just a cover that I had to put onto the uh, the original uh, base pan. I think that cost me thirty dollars extra to put it onto the base. Um, I wasn't going to muck around it with uh, myself. Um, so that was a good, really good addition. And I've done some big some big hours on this. I've ridden from uh, South Sydney back up to the Tweed um, on this seat, and really you know, haven't had many issues to uh, too much at all. Um, I've also added a uh, screen for bikes, uh, front front screen on the front. Uh, you'll see the bike's actually called Pumba. There's Pumba right there. Um, but the screen keeps a lot of the wind, uh, the, uh, wind from the chest area. Uh, it doesn't give me any buffering or anything like that, so I think it's a really good addition. Uh, from the luggage uh, side of things, we've got the, the fender bag from uh, Wolfman. The uh, tank bag from Wolfman, the back bag from Wolfman, the tail rack, it's Wolfman as well. Uh, this is just a generic uh, little uh, sort of Pelican style case which I've attached on to a, to a rack. Uh, I've just drilled it uh, through so it's a hard, hard mounted. Uh, then I've got the uh, mule pack panniers. Um, Adventure Moto, uh, sorry, Adventure Bike Australia um, went to a lot of effort to get these in for me. Um, so, and they're, they're mounted to the uh, pro, uh, pro cycle uh, uh, frames. Um, but they've been extremely well used. As you can, sure you can see the scratches and the, the bangs on them, uh, and they've held up an absolute treat for the camping. There are some little attachments here which you can use to strap over. I don't currently use anything on the panniers, but if I was to do any more uh, around Australia or do any, any sort of long, long distance uh, trips, uh, I would probably put some bags on the top of there as well. Um, so brakes, we'll put some larger, uh, because of the extra weight that I carry on the bike, I've put an extra large uh, front disc on, so it's a Wolf 9. Uh, it just, just has a little adapter there which uh, brings the, uh, the calipers out a little bit more. Um, so they work really well to pull me up. Um, in the rear, I've also changed to uh, to go for the Warp 9 rear disc as well. The bike's getting on 50,000 k's now, so it's about time for a change. And I've also put uh, braided lines um, all the way through from, uh, from the front to the rear. Uh, again, just as a uh, pre-maintenance uh, option. Um, other stuff that I've done to it, just to make it look pretty, <laughs> I've put a R RMZ uh, front uh, mudguard on it, just because I didn't like the uh, the old one. Uh, we've put a power socket on it, so I can charge up all my, all my USB port, port, um, points and uh, GoPros and everything whilst I'm on the road. I did used to have one on the handlebars here, um, but removed it because uh, if I didn't ride the bike for a week or two, it would actually drain the battery. Um, I've got a rear fender eliminator, uh, so it just uh, cleans up the rear of the bike. Uh, I have put a center stand on, which uh, may be a little bit of an overkill, but uh, I find uh, it's really good for doing just general maintenance on the motorcycle to have it upright. Also, if I'm doing tyre changes and stuff like that in the field. Um, I've got a tachometer. Uh, again, it was, that was bought by a mate of mine. Um, I was using it when I was trying to, uh, to tune my old carburetor. Uh, but now that I've uh, got the TM40, I don't really need it. It's just uh, an added accessory that I've got. It's just got still on the bike. Um, we've got the Pro... Uh, Pro Cycle uh, Cush Rubbers, the new, uh, the new ones in there. Um, the old ones uh, sh uh, sort, of, sort of get a little bit soft and they go out too quickly. Um, and we've also got the, and one of the most important things I think, is the foot stand enlarger. I don't know why, why manufacturers put such short foot stands, uh, kickstand ends on uh, adventure bike for any bike for that matter because it's something uh, that you really don't want to be uh, digging into the ground. So anyway guys, 
This is my DR650, also known as Pumba. Uh, thank you very much for watching. It's been an interesting build. I've had uh, a lot of fun along the way. It's cost me a bit of money along the way. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it's worth it. And um, yeah, we'll catch you next time. Bye.